Welcome to What is Truth, brought to you by the Southern New Mexico Church of God in Las Cruces, New Mexico. What is Truth is a weekly program which seeks to focus our attention on the truth of God's Word. Now, with this week's lesson, here's Pastor Meyer Spock. Welcome to the program. You know, that's a good question. When you die, do you immediately go up to heaven? Does a Christian, upon his death, just go up to heaven and be with Christ and with God? Is that a fact or not? Well, when Christians die, are they conscious or are they unconscious? And when do they get to heaven? Now, these are questions that have been asked through the, through the ages. We're going to turn to Job chapter 4 in verse, uh, verse uh, chapter 14 in verse 14. But before we go to the Bible... We have two important booklets we'd like to share with you today. The first is, why were you born? Why were you born? And at the bottom of the booklet, it says, do you really know why you were born? Do you have a specific purpose here on earth? Do you realize God has a purpose being worked out for you? Most fail to understand that purpose. Read this booklet, you will be surprised. I can guarantee you'll be surprised. The second booklet is another good question. Just what do you mean born again? Now a lot of people think that they're saved or they're born again and uh, it says here, don't be too sure you know. Many religious people talk about being born again yet they don't really know what Christ meant by those words. The truth is surprising, startling. Here, made so plain, you will understand. You could have these two free booklets. You could also have a DVD of this program for free. All you have to do is call the number on the screen, and we'll put it back up there at the end of the program. Please get a your Bible, a notebook and a pen, or at least a piece of paper and a pen, you're going to want to write down these scriptures and look them up later on. Okay, we're going to the book of Job. That's Job chapter 14. And here in Job 14, it's one of the oldest books of the Bible. This book of Job uh, is one of the oldest books in the Bible, and it says here in Job chapter 14, and we'll look in verse 14. It says, If a man die, shall he live again? If a man dies, shall he live again? Job is going to answer that for us later on, but we're going to look in the New Testament and see what the New Testament tells us. Let's go first to Revelation, the last book of the Bible, Revelation chapter 12, and we're going to look in verse 9. Revelation 12, verse 9. And it says here in Revelation 12, verse 9, And the great dragon was cast out, that old serpent called the devil, and Satan, which deceives the whole world. Now, if you're deceived, you really don't know you're deceived, do you? He was cast out into the earth, and his angels were cast out with him. So Satan's walking around the earth doing deception. He is the master of deception. And he, why do we have all of these various religions, thousands of religions teaching different things and claiming that they get their words from the Bible? They get their doctrines from the Bible. How can that be? Especially when the doctrines differ. Okay, let's go to another scripture in John 
chapter 17. That's the Gospel of John, and we're looking in chapter 17, and we're going to look in verse 17. And it says here in verse 17, it says, Sanctify them through your truth. You're sanctified. That means you're set aside for a holy purpose. You're, you're, you are at that point holy, sanctified them through your truth. Your word is truth. So there can't be any contradictions. The word of God is true. That's, all there, that's what Jesus said. You either believe it or you don't believe it. Now, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. It's called the Resurrection Chapter. <clears throat> and we're looking in verse 50. <clears throat> and it says here, Now this I say, brethren, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God. <clears throat> Neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Let's stop right there for a moment. So let's pose the question. Let's just pose the question. We're stopping here right now. We're posing the question. You're up in heaven. You're with Jesus Christ and God, right? You're with the, that means you're a spirit being. You, you can't, flesh and blood cannot go up to heaven. You're a spirit being and you're with God and you're with Jesus Christ and you have it made, right? then what would the use of the resurrection be? Why would you want that old body? What good would it do you? Well, now we're going to read on. Now we're going to look at verse 51. Behold, I show you a mystery. Paul shows us a mystery, but he also solves it. We shall not all sleep. What does he mean by sleep? He means we won't all die. The Bible talks of death as being sleep. You're unconscious. But we shall all be changed. When? When are we changed? Verse 52, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. That's the blink of an eyelid. At the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound. So here's a sounding trumpet making a lot of noise. And the dead shall be raised incorruptible. And we, who is we? We are Christians. We shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption. And this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption. And this mortal shall have put on immortality, we become immortal. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? We're going to go back now to the Old Testament, to the wisest man who ever lived, and that was King Solomon. And King Solomon it wrote the book of Ecclesiastes. You'll find that after the book of Psalms and Proverbs. So we're looking in Ecclesiastes and we're in chapter 9 and let's read verse 5. Verse 5 says, For the living know that they shall die. You know you're going to die as well as everybody else knows eventually we're going to die. But the dead know not anything. The, death, the dead are unconscious. They don't know of anything. Neither have they any more a reward. For the memory of them is forgotten. Wow. Wow. Now, that's saying something there. Let's read on a little bit further. So, Solomon says, For the living know that they shall die, but the dead know not anything. 
also their love and their hatred, and their envy is now perished. Neither have they any more a portion forever in anything that is done under the sun. So here's some good advice that Solomon gives you. It says, go your way, eat bread with joy, and drink your wine with a merry heart. For God now accepts your works. God now accepts your works. Let your garments be always white. That means pure. And let your head lack no anointment. Live joyfully with a wife whom you love all the days of the life of your vanity, which he has given you under the sun, all the days of your vanity, for that is your portion in this life and in your labor, which you take under the sun. Whatsoever your hand finds to do, do it with your might, for there is no work, nor device, nor knowledge, nor wisdom, in the grave where you go. There's nothing there. You're completely unconscious in the grave. Let's go back to Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, and here we read in verse 1, Ecclesiastes 12 verse 1, Remember now your Creator, in the days of your youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, when you shall say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain, in the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble and the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease because they are few, and those who look out the window be darkened, and the doors shall be shut in the streets, when the sound of the grinding is low, and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Also, when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and your desire shall fail. Now we'll drop down to verse 13. And Solomon gets to the point now. He says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. So he gives good advice here. Fear God, which is also respect God, and keep his commandments, for this is the whole duty of man, keeping God's commandments. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Now we're going to come back now on Ecclesiastes chapter 7, where we're going to see some more uh, of Solomon's wisdom. So please don't go away. We'll be right back. Be the Women's Club, located away from the crowds but close to home. Come in throughout the day for Jazzercise, the world's dance fitness leader for nearly 40 years. Treat yourself to a relaxing massage. Or unwind the lounge area or outside on the balcony with friends. La Buena Vida Women's Club located and designed with women in mind. For information, call Diane at 650-9721. If you're looking for a new pet that you can cherish every day, consider adopting from a shelter. Shelters are full of healthy, loyal, fun, loving pets, eager to become a part of your family. A person is the best thing to happen to a shelter pet. So bring home your new buddy today. To find out more, you can visit the shelterpetproject.org. Celebrate, celebrate, Fiesta Motors. Come and see us today and discover why our service is second to none. In business for over 17 years, we have the right car for you. 
when you buy a vehicle from Fiesta Motors, we do everything possible to ensure your satisfaction. Located at the corner of El Paseo and Main, see you there. Celebrate Fiesta Motors, we buying a car, is always a celebration. Okay, before we go back to Ecclesiastes, we're going to take a look at John chapter 3, where Jesus is talking to Nicodemus. And here he says in verse 13, says in verse 13, And no man has ascended up to heaven. No man ascended up to heaven, but he who came down from heaven, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. So he told Nicodemus, no man has went to heaven. Let's go back to Ecclesiastes chapter 7 and verse 1. Ecclesiastes 7 verse 1. A good name is better than precious ointment, and the day of death than the day of one's birth. He's saying that the day of a person's death is better than the day of his birth. Why? It is better to go to the house of mourning than, go, than to go to the house of feasting. Why? What, what's wrong with partying? Okay? For that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to his heart. So if you're out there partying, you don't need God. You're having a good time. Your thoughts aren't about God, and... Uh, you don't need God in your life. You're doing fine. Here it says, sorrow is better than laughter. For the countenance, for the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the song of fools. So Solomon gives us some very good advice. We go on now to 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 is the companion scripture to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. And here we learn something in verse 13. We're going to look now at verse 13. But I would not have you to be ignorant brethren concerning them which are asleep. So Paul says that they're asleep, they're unconscious, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. So if I stop right here, you're going to say, Meyer, you proved, you proved the point, you disproved your point. Okay? Jesus is going, is, God is going to bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. So this is the Lord's word. That we who are alive and remain... So we're alive and we're remain unto the coming of the Lord. We're waiting for the Lord to come. Shall not prevent. This is an old English word meaning precede. Other explanations show it means precede. Precede them which are asleep. For the Lord himself. Notice that. The Lord himself. He doesn't have anybody with him. He's all by himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. There's noise. With the voice of the archangel, there's more noise. And with the trump of God, the trumpet of God. So there's more noise. So much for the secret rapture. There's no secret rapture here. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Okay, the dead in Christ are going to rise first. What about we who are alive? Verse 17, Then we who, which are alive and remain 
shall be caught up together with them in the clouds. Does it say anything here about heaven? To meet the Lord in the air. Does it say anything about heaven here? It talks about clouds. It talks about air that is part of this earth. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. And that's exactly what we're doing today. We're comforting each other with these words. Let's go back to Revelation chapter 20. And we're going to see that there is a thousand year period before we go to heaven. One thousand year period. Let's see it. And I saw an angel come down from heaven having the key of the bottomless pit and a great chain in his hand. And he laid hold of the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil, who has deceived the whole world, by the way, and Satan, and bound him a thousand years. What's going to happen during the thousand years? We're going to see. And cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more. He's not going to deceive the nations till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. And I saw thrones, and they sat upon them, and judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them who were beheaded for the witness of Jesus and for the word of God, and which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, neither had received his mark upon their foreheads or in their hands. This is the 666 mark. And they lived and reigned with Christ a thousand years. Where at? Where at? Was it here on earth or was it up in heaven? Where did they reign with Jesus Christ? And we're going to see in Revelation chapter 5, and we're going to look in verse 10. Revelation 5, verse 10 says, I want you to read it with me. And have made us, that's Christians, unto our God, kings and priests, and we shall reign on the earth. We're going to reign right here on the earth for 1,000 years. We're going to be resurrected. Let me ask you a question. Let me just ask you a question. Can you, can you be in two places at one time? Two places at one time. Is that possible? Well, can you be in heaven? Or can you be here on the earth at the same time? Well, we know at death, we know the body goes into the grave. And we know that the spirit goes back to God who gave it. God gave you your spirit. What is the spirit in man? It's intellect. It's everything that you've ever thought about in your entire life, everything you've ever done. It's your personality. Everyone has a different personality, a different way of thinking. Okay? So, consequently, that spirit went back to God. As Solomon pointed out, the dead know nothing. Dead know nothing. You see? So, the God resurrects those people out of the grave, puts his spirit back in them, and they become immortal. Let's go to Hebrews. We'll go to one more. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. And we're going to see here about all of the saints who have ever lived. The sa all, of all of the saints who ever lived. And it says here in verse 39. Let's read it. Chapter 11, verse 39. It says... Chapter 11, verse 39. Here we are. And these all, having obtained a good report 
through faith received not the promise. They didn't receive the promise. God having provided some better thing for us that they without us should not be made perfect. Here it is, it's very simple. I want to explain you so you can really grasp the whole concept of the idea. It seems like most religions have one thing in common. What is the one thing they have in common? You die, you're a Christian, you go up to heaven. Now, the ancient Egyptians uh, had that in common. They believed it. They believed you, you were dead, you went over the river Styx, and you went into heaven. And they would pack the tombs with gold and food and uh, uh, even slaves. They put slaves, they killed the slaves, and you'd have your slaves after death to, to help you. Okay, so this is one universal teaching. Now, what does the Bible teach? What does Jesus Christ teach? Jesus Christ taught that no man has ascended up to heaven. Why? Because there's no need for it. Heaven is fine. We don't need to go to heaven. The heaven is in beautiful shape. The problems are right down here on the earth, right here on the earth. And we're here to solve the problems on the earth. So when we're resurrected or when we're changed, if we're alive at Christ's coming or we are resurrected, we come right back to earth for 1,000 years and we straighten out the earth. We re rebuild the earth. Now I have in my book, World War III, coming soon, I have a whole chapter about the secret rapture. And you can read it in the book. It's sold at the Revival Bookstore. Barnes & Noble has them in stock. You could go there, take a look at them, pick it up, read it, see what you think. See if you, you want you want that. Now we have an interactive Bible study every week at 1701 East Missouri. We have, we have a meeting room there. It was Saturday at 1 o'clock. Why don't you come join us? Bring your Bible, a notebook, and a pen. Bring your questions. It's interactive. You can interact with us. We can interact with you. We can an answer what questions we have according to the Bible study or any other question that has nothing to do with the Bible study. Okay, now we're winding up. Until next time, this is Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God saying goodbye, my friends. You have been listening to What is Truth with Pastor Meyer Stahl of the Southern New Mexico Church of God located in Las Cruces, New Mexico. For copies of today's lesson or for more information, call area code 575-650-7359. That's 575-650-7359. Join us next week at this same time for another edition of What is Truth? Until next week, we wish you God's richest blessings.